So I, I live by two core principles. The first is that everything everyone knows, they learned. And I don't accept that I'm less intelligent than the next person, which means I can learn it too. The second is that every single excuse I have is valid, but that's still not going to give me the results that I want. And so we do live in this really uh, PC culture today where people are looking for the excuse. And the truth is the excuse is completely valid. Yes, you are a young black person growing up in democratic South Africa for the past 26 years, but for hundreds of years before that, it wasn't built for you to succeed. Yes, you're living in one of the most difficult credit capital markets in the world. So it's hard to get access to funding to start a business. Yeah, all of that stuff's true, but that's still not gonna change your circumstance. So the test is not whether or not you know the, the reasons for not succeeding. The test is whether or not you're willing to do whatever it takes to get to that next level. And a big part of the whatever it takes actually is just remain teachable. Just be a student, student of the game, a student of life, a student of those who've achieved. And I've found that those two things have really stood me in good stead. Your reality is your reality. So you're not imagining it. You're not imagining that you're poor. You're not imagining that you're left out because you live in a third world country. You're not imagining that you're not getting the right quality of education to make you globally competitive. You're not imagining that. That shit's real. Okay, but now that you've got it, you can live in the emotion and sometimes I do. I get really, really mad and really, really upset. But then the following morning comes and you realize that you've moved not an inch of distance, yet you've expanded all of this time and this emotion. Right now, if you think about the world we live in, just think about how much hatred there is. Think about how much anger there is. And yet we're not moving. So what really pulls me out of it, and it's an honest conversation with me, is I go, do you want the emotion or do you want progress? Because you can't have both. I'll give you an example. You're at the gym, you're curling, you're rep eight, and your body starts to fire off those signals in your brain and it goes, stop, it hurts. If you stop, you get the emotion, you don't get the progress. So if you talk to any decent athlete, they'll tell you that where the pain starts is when the work starts. Talk to any decent entrepreneur that's built a large scale business, they'll tell you the shit they had to go through. So you either get the emotion or you get the progress, but you can't have both. We're living in this world today where everybody is just so deeply embedded in the emotion. I want to be angry at Tom because he's X, Y, and Z, and I want to be angry at Vusi because Yeah, yet you make no progress. So yours and my challenge, I think, as a generation is how do we give the world progress? My generation has it the easiest. Like, I think we forget, actually, that our generation probably has it the easiest in the history of Homo sapiens on this little rock called planet Earth. In my generation, if I say something that's politically incorrect, I might trend on Twitter. If my grandfather said something politically incorrect, he would have been killed or landed up in jail. So sometimes we've lost a sense of perspective. It's not easy, but damn, it's much easier than it's ever been. And you have a responsibility to own your progress. You can either own the emotion of progress, but you don't get both. The hardest thing to do is to enable people to see themselves as they are, not as they hoped they were, not as they've been taught they are, but as they actually are. It's the single hardest thing to do, and I'll tell you why. Because we're all embedded in this construct of a thing called identity. And what people forget is identity by its very nature, one is man-made and two is exclusive. What that means is the minute I say I'm male, it means I'm not female. If I say I'm black, it means I'm not white. If I say I'm African, it means I'm not American. If I say I am educated, it means I'm not illiterate. So all the little words we use to construct identity put us in a box, they don't free us. And it's something people I think don't think about because people today have assumed an identity for who they are. And it's all over, right? It's in the media, it's on social media, it's on TV, it's in the newspapers, it's in music videos. All you're being sold is an identity. This is what you should be based on where you come from and based on how you've been socialized. So this thing about identity, I think is so powerful because in today's world, you know, we're no longer demographics, we're a psychographic now. There is a kid living in Kuala Lumpur who's never been out of Kuala Lumpur, who sounds like a kid in Brooklyn, New York because he's watching Jay-Z on, on YouTube. So he's completely immersed in that culture and he's never left his small little village. And that's exactly the point is everything you've been taught you are, somebody taught you that's what you are. Now, you can keep that identity, but again, you can't get the progress. And so what a lot of people do is they hang on to it, right? I'll tell you just quickly a, a story. So my dad was the sensei in the dojo and I used to train with my dad in the dojo. And so I asked him one time, I was like, how come we get to change belts? Couldn't you teach the methodology without the belt system? 
he said two things. He said, first, human beings are incentive-based, so you need something to aim for. But he said, the second thing is the reason we give you a belt is because it assigns an identity. Now, it doesn't mean that if you're orange belt, you can't take on a brown belt. It's just you embed that in your mind and you go, well, he's senior then, therefore. And so one of the things he said to me, one of the things you're going to have to learn is that real life doesn't have a belt system. So everything we know and have learned about identity is given to us. It's a template that somebody has given you and you can just choose to run that script of Macross or not. Final thing, just for you to think about, which is this, what's the worst that can happen? Well, the worst that can happen is you're wrong. Then you're educated, which goes back to where we started at the very beginning, right? Remain teachable. So the worst thing that can happen is you say something, you're wrong, somebody picks up the phone, you're educated, you grow up and you mature. But I think it's really important. I think this idea of identity is just so powerful. When somebody asks the question, who are you? How do you answer that question? Are you the job you have? Are you the place you come from? Are you the lineage of your ancestors? Are you the qualifications? Are you your geography? Who are you, right? And I think a lot of us don't really bother to give that enough thought. If you're driving your car and for some other strange reason, you know, the car stalls and you're stuck, you have one of two things you can do. And let's imagine you're in a cell phone black zone, you can't phone anybody. You get one or two things you can do. Sit in the car, switch on your hazards, and pray somebody's going to come past you. And that's what we call the charity approach. Hi, I'm here. I grew up poor. I didn't get a good education. Help. It completely gives the power to the person on the other side of the equation, which is the, I feel like I want to help, and here's how much I'm willing to help with. The alternative is you open the driver's door, you drop the uh, handbrake, you put your shoulder behind the chassis, and you push. Now, when you start pushing, the hardest part is going to be that initial meter because the car is completely still. It's got no momentum. So you start pushing. And what happens is five meters down the line, 10 meters down the line, assuming the road is flat, of course, all of a sudden you're not pushing as hard as you were, you're just maintaining momentum. So the reason I always say to people, start, is because the hardest part is the beginning. My dad used to say to me, you will always be the worst at something the first time you do it. The results you get the first time you do it are not the true results. That was the worst version of you doing that thing. First time you sing, first time doing public speaking, you know, first time you try to do a comedy set. First time you do anything is the worst time because you don't have the skill set. But as you do it, what happens is you mature, you get better and you learn. So that's what I mean by that. The reason it's important to start is because all of those stories, that self narrative that you've been saying and toiling in your head, the excuses are valid. The world isn't fair. And guess what? At the beginning, it is going to be tough. But the, the only way out of it is to start. There is no other way out of it. You can't negotiate negotiate with it. Let me, let me just one last thing for you to think about. So I said this to an entrepreneur literally today who came to see me about this very thing. And uh, she was saying to me, look, you know, business, it's COVID. It's been a tough time. And I said to her, I said, you know, if you went to imagine, you know, the Empire State Building, I said to you, if you went to the top of the building and stood at the ledge, prayed to whichever God you praise, God, Buddha, Allah, and told them that you don't believe in gravity and jumped, you'd find that gravity believes in you. So I was saying to her, the environment in the moment we're in, is gravity. You can't negotiate your way out of it. What you can do is you can get started with who you need to be to survive this moment. And what she was doing, which is what I think a lot of people do, is they, they hang on to who they used to be. Right? So I used to be the, well, that's not working anymore. So who do you need to be? And get started on that journey. I really honestly, firmly believe in the school of starting. Starting, I think, is often more important in the entire momentum construct than everything that comes after that.